This video is going to explain how to log into Everify and how to get started with, uh, with a module. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start off on a Google window and you can just search for Everfi, E-V-E-R-F-I. And we'll go to student teacher login. Let me show you what this looks like when you're logged out. So we are not going to use emails when we do this. Your username is going to be Rax20, because this is the 2020 school year, underscore, and then your last name. And the password I'm going to preset for everybody is Rax2020, R-A-C-S 2020. Now, when you sign in, the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is to change your password. I suggest you change it to that same value of Rax2020. The advantage of that is that when we come back later in the year to do this, you won't have forgotten what your password is. Uh, and they won't send you your password because they don't know your email address because I don't want them to know your email address. And they're, you're not going to have to send me a panicked email saying, I don't remember what my password is and it's not Rax2020. Because if you do that, I'll just change it to Rax2020 and then let you know that. So it's your password is always Rax2020. But if you don't change it, then it won't be changed, right? So we sign in. When you start out, the first thing it's going to do after it asks you to change your password is it'll give you a little um, survey to find out how much you know about personal finance. Um, give the best answers you can. It just takes a few seconds. We're all enrolled in the Northwest Financial Scholars Program, which is something that we'll teach. Well, if you click on that, we'll see what it is that we're, we're going to be learning this year. We're going to be learning banking basics, the basic ideas of the kind of services that banks offer and how to take advantage of them. Income and employment, <clears throat> which covers uh, how to read a pay stub and how to figure out what kind of career might be right for you. Uh, budgeting, which is figuring out how to plan how to spend your money so that you have enough for everything that you need to, um, you know, pay for over the, you know, considering your necessities and things that you want to have. Consumer skills, which gives you an idea of uh, how to make the most informed purchases you can. Credit and debt, talking about uh, how credit cards work and how loans work. Financing higher education, which talks specifically about planning to pay for college, and insurance is the last module. We're going to go through all seven modules over the course of this year. Uh, so there's, um, uh, well, the other thing I want to say is that um, all of these modules are completely self-contained. Um, do the ones that I assigned to you. But if you want to do extra ones to either get ahead in the class or because you're interested in that topic, you can go ahead and do that. Um, as I say, all of these will be assigned before the course is over. So you would just be getting ahead on your work. Uh, as you take these, um, they are self-directed. You just need to, um, you know, pay attention and follow along. I have found that there are a few places where it's not completely clear what you need to do in order to progress the story. Um, if that happens to you, you can send me an email or send Ms. Walters an email. And uh, we've got a little chart that we've put together over the years of where students get stuck. Uh, one thing that will be very useful is if you're at this home screen um, and you click in the module that you're interested in, it will give you your progress bar. So if you tell me don't if if you tell me I'm stuck in Everify, you're just going to have to wait for me to send you a next email and say, where are you stuck? If you say I'm stuck in module two and my progress is 34%, then I'm gonna say, oh yeah, you're on that screen. Yeah, you need to click this button here. It's really not clear. Sorry about that. Another thing that's going to happen at the end of each module is that you're going to take a quiz. There are going to be 10 multiple choice questions and you need to get at least seven right to pass. Uh, if you get 70 or more, you pass and I give you full credit for doing this Everfy activity. If you don't get 100%, one of the nice things they do is that they let you retake the quiz um, and at the end of the quiz, 
they will give you little notes about all of the questions that you got wrong. So if you got four questions wrong, you're going to see four tips when they tell you that you got four questions wrong. If you write those down and retake the quiz, those are going to be points that you'll want to um, pay special attention to getting right when you take it the second time. Uh, I don't want to say that they ask the same 10 questions in every quiz, but they, they ask, they, they hit the same 10 topics. So each topic they can ask in two or three different ways. But it should be clear to you pretty quickly about how in, you know, you might only have to retake the quiz uh, two or three times. Um, if you have more trouble after that, um, see me in a Zoom session and we can walk through the quiz together and talk about it. Okay, so that's how EverFi works and what will be expected of you from EverFi. These lesson lengths, they tend to be under a half hour each. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think the students hated doing them last year. Uh, in places, they're fun. Uh, in more places, I think they're interesting. So uh, hopefully you will enjoy that uh, as much as you learn from it. So enjoy EverFi.